Hey everyone, it's Lucky with Unfiltered Lucky. And today I want to talk a little bit about these preliminary toxicology reports that some of the victims' families have been talking about the past few days in the Kansas City 3 case. I just want to make clear that these are preliminary toxicology reports. So the official reports are not in yet. And before I get into this, I also want to say that just because substances were found in these men's systems absolutely does not mean that this was an everyday thing for these men. They were celebrating a big win for their football team, and it was a big game. So maybe after drinking all day, they decided to go to Jordan Willis's house and maybe take their party to the next level. But it's very possible that these men may not do this very often at all. It just happened to be a bad lapse in judgment after a day of drinking, and they made some decisions that ended up costing them their lives. As many of us had speculated, F. Fent was found in their systems. I'm going to refer to it as F in this video. Now, they also had the white stuff and the green stuff in their systems, along with the alcohol that they had been drinking all day long. So they had a wide variety of substances in their bodies. And this can cause a lot of problems. They've got uppers. They've got downers. They've got a mixture going on inside their bodies. It's very possible that this mixture caused their body temperature to rise drastically, which might explain why the three men went outside to the backyard. Maybe they thought they were just going to run outside to the backyard and get some cool air, try to cool off. That might explain why one of the men didn't have a coat on. They might have thought they were just going to run out and, you know, cool down, and then run back inside. Now that didn't happen. Also, it's very possible that all four men, including Jordan Willis, used the same substances. It's even possible that the fifth man that was there used the same substances. Narcotics affect everyone differently. So it's very possible that all of these men we're using the same, the same substances together. When these three men go outside, it's very possible that Jordan Willis knows better. Jordan Willis is a scientist. He knows about chemicals and about reactions and about how things like that work. So it's very possible that he knew better than to go outside. These three men had very high levels of F in their systems. So they were basically partially sedated when they went outside. So that could have very well been the cause of why they lost their lives. And I'm going to explain that. So because now there's talk about these substances being in these men's systems, a lot of people are going to assume that it was an overdose of narcotics. But that's not necessarily what could have happened. That may not be the cause of death. You know, they could have gone outside to cool down and with that high of levels of F in their body, along with the other mixtures of alcohol and the green, that would have basically sedated them in the backyard. So it's very possible that although these substances were in their system and were the cause of why these men lost their lives, I think that it's very likely that 
when the cause of death is revealed, it's going to be hypothermia. So although these men had high levels of narcotics in their systems, it doesn't necessarily mean that that's what took their lives. Like I said, it's very possible that all these men were using these substances. And the reason that Jordan survived is because he passed out inside the house, possibly knowing that it would be dangerous for him to go outside since he knows about chemicals and how they work, how they react. So these men went outside possibly to cool off and they were sedated in the backyard and that's where they passed out. Now it would take less than an hour for these men you know, to lose their lives to hypothermia. This is why it's important to wait for the results of the autopsies. Because now that we have the preliminary toxicology reports, a lot of people are going to say, oh, well, it was an OD. But that might not have been their cause of death. Their cause of death could likely be hypothermia. So basically the narcotics put them in the situation to lose their life from hypothermia. It's kind of the same case with Matthew Perry. You know, Matthew Perry, a lot of people were saying, you know, that, that he passed from an OD. But that wasn't really the case. The case was that the substances, one being the K that was in his body, caused him to be, be unable to hold his head above water. And Matthew Perry drowned. So his cause of death was drowning. So it's really important to hold on until we get these reports. And that's what they're waiting for. The toxicology reports come back. I mean, the toxicology reports can come back pretty quickly. They say, you know, six to eight weeks. But that's because of the length of time that it's going to, you know, take a coroner to do proper autopsies and do them thoroughly. That's what takes so long. So even though we have the toxicology reports and allegedly these men had these substances in their system, the autopsies are what's going to tell us how these men lost their lives. Now we know that the narcotics contributed to that, but did these men lose their lives to hypothermia from passing out outside? So I think that it's a good possibility that the reason that law enforcement didn't suspect any foul play from the beginning was because of the information that Jordan Willis probably gave to law enforcement. Now, we know that when these three men were discovered in Jordan Willis's backyard and law enforcement arrived at his home, we know that they handcuffed Jordan Willis and they basically questioned him. Now, of course, Jordan Willis right away is not going to want to say anything about the narcotics. It could probably jeopardize his job and his career. So maybe Jordan didn't say anything about the narcotics right away. But after being questioned, you know, maybe he gave law enforcement the information about the substances that these men were using and that the substances that these men were using together. Because we have to remember, Jordan crashed out for almost two days. So it's possible that the reason he didn't lose his life and basically was able to sleep it off was because he didn't go outside with those three men. Now, is it possible that those three men went to Jordan Willis's house because, you know, he had the supply? That's very possible. But it's also very possible that these men showed up with their own contributions to this party. You know, this was an after party. So these men may have decided that they were going to take their celebration to a higher level. And maybe they all participated together. 
And that's why law enforcement believed in the very beginning that there was no sign of foul play. It's, it's very possible. It would be interesting to know what was in Jordan, what, what was in Jordan Willis's system as well. I don't believe, I, I, have, I haven't heard anything about whether he, was, whether he was tested or not. And that would have been obviously a time-sensitive issue. So it would, it would be interesting to know what was in his system as well. Well, I'm going to stay on top of this because there's details coming out all of the time. But I feel like in the beginning, I believed that there was something really strange going on here. And now I kind of feel like we have the explanation about what happened that night. And uh, we have a little bit more clarity on what caused these men to lose their lives. Now, whether it was an OD or whether it was hypothermia, we'll have to wait to find out until those official reports come out. So please like and please subscribe to my channel if you like my content. I really do appreciate it. We'll see you next time.